What we're going to be doing in this video is deriving Kepler's third law. Now in order to derive this we have the following situation. We have a planet of mass lowercase m which is orbiting around a star which has a mass capital M. The radius of the orbit or the average radius of this orbit is given by r. Okay, now just before we get started, we're going to assume that the planet is moving in a circle around the planet. In practice, the actual orbit is an ellipse. However, very, very often the planets have very high, uh, sorry, very low eccentricity, which in turn would mean that our assumption is a valid one. Now, what forces are acting on this planet? We know that this planet is essentially moving in a circle. And what's causing it to move in a circle is the gravitational force. Now, this gravitational force is actually also the centripetal force, is the source for the centripetal force. Remember, any object which moves in a circle is going to experience a centripetal force. So, let's set both of those forces equal together. So um, what I'm going to write over here is that the gravitational force is equal to the centripetal force. If you are not quite so sure about centripetal forces, I have a whole video in the circular motion portion of this course. Okay, well, the gravitational force, we know that the magnitude of that force is going to be gmm divided by r squared, where m is the mass of the sun, lowercase m is the mass of the planet, and r squared will be the average radius of its orbit. And from centripetal motion, we know as well that this is going to equal to mv squared divided by r. Now we can immediately see that we can do some cancellations. So we know that the mass of the planet will be irrelevant in this case because that's going to cancel out. So we can cancel out the masses. We can also cancel out one of those uh, r's like so. A useful thing, a very very useful thing to remember is because the planet is moving in a circle we can say that the velocity i'm going to write this over here on the side the velocity of the planet will be equal to the distance traveled divided by the time because it's moving at a constant velocity so the distance travel will just be the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r i'm going to need to divide that by the the amount of time it takes for the planet to move around its orbit which is the time period is the orbital time period so this will be divided by t okay well i can actually let's square that as well because we can see that in our equation this is squared so what i'm going to do is say that v squared is going to equal 4 pi squared r squared divided by t squared perfect now let's rewrite the um, the following equation uh, with all the cancellations so it's nice and neat and we get the gm divided by r is going to equal v squared now rather than v squared i'm going to put this expression in there like so and uh, yeah rather than v squared i'm just going to write 4 pi squared r squared let's make sure i have enough space for the, for the square symbol like so and i'm just going to need to divide that by t squared we are almost there in deriving kepler's third law so uh, all we need to do is just do a little bit of rearranging so i'm going to bring the t squared onto this side i'm going to bring the r over there and what i'm going to get is that t squared gm is going to equal to 4 pi squared and i'm going to bring the r over on this side or if you think about it in algebraic uh, terms i'm going to multiply both sides by uh, by r which is going to give me r cubed on this side my final step would be just to rearrange for the um, 
for t squared essentially, uh, what I'm going to get is that t squared will be equal to 4 pi squared divided by gm multiplied by r cubed. And there we have it. This is a statement of Kepler's third law, that the square of the orbital time period is proportional to the cube of the orbital distance with our constant of proportionality being 4 pi squared over gm. Okay folks, so hopefully you found this helpful for more examples and past paper questions and explanations. Um, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you very much.